Today, we find out, among other things, when the first ever college football game took place on this episode of Antique Bottle Stories. George Washington Helm was born in 1822 in Pennsylvania. When he was in his 20s, he moved to Louisiana with his brother and he became a lawyer around age 30. Then, during the Civil War, he was a captain in the Confederate Army. When the war ended, he headed to New Jersey where he got into real estate and then he ended up acquiring a good amount of property. When he was 36, he married Margaret. In the census, she goes by Maggie. Now, Maggie's father was a guy named Leonard Appleby. He had a snuff and tobacco factory that he started back in 1825. In 1850, this factory only employed about eight people. This factory had five buildings. It turns out that this is the same factory that George Helm would end up taking over. Now this area that the factory was on was initially known as Railroad Mills. George bought all the land up to Spotswood, about 500 acres, and he named it Helmetta. If you break that down, Helm, obviously, and Etta was his daughter. Her name was Olivia Antoinette, but I guess she went by Etta. So Helm, Etta. The factory was in the center of this town. Helmetta was officially incorporated as a municipality in March 1888. Now it looks like Leonard Appleby started to hand the reins of the factory to his son, Jacob Charles Appleby, which would be Maggie's brother. So in 1866, eight years after George marries Maggie, George and his brother-in-law, Jacob Appleby, become business partners at the Railroad Mills Snuff Factory. Here's a newspaper ad from 1866. And here's one from 1872. This train kind of becomes their logo. The last time I see Appleby working there, though, is 1880. After that, it doesn't really say where he's working until 1888, and it lists that he's in real estate. George incorporated the George W. Helm Company in 1884. He had built up the whole town. He employed almost 100% of the town's people, which totaled between 300 and 400 people. And by the 1930s, it was up to 500 people. And in the 1890s, he had houses built up for the employees. Some of them are still standing. He also built a little general store, which doesn't seem to be standing. He took this little unknown area that had three houses on it when he bought it, and he made it into this prospering little town. Today, there is a road named George Helm Road in Helmetta. And see that Helmetta pond right there? At one time, that served as a source of power for the mill. Now, George had a mansion at 11 High Street. This is a picture of it before it was demolished in 2002. Etta also had a mansion on High Street. It is still standing and it's a private residence. I don't see the address for it, but I do see two houses down the street from the factory and maybe it's one of these. Now on the morning of June 13th, 1893, George stayed behind while his wife Maggie and one of their sons, George A, and George's wife left for the Chicago World's Fair. Well, that night, about 7 p.m., George sat on his front porch talking with an employee when he suddenly collapsed in his chair, dying unexpectedly of a heart attack. He was age 71. Etta was at her house, so someone went and got her. His obituary says that his casket was carried by employees and that over 1,500 people attended his funeral. On June 16th, the day of his funeral, the snuff mill buildings were draped in mourning. His obituary says, Mr. Helm was held in high esteem by all who knew him as public-spirited, liberal-minded, helpful, and charitable, was ever willing to promote the success of others, and took pride and care in assisting the comfort and prosperity of those who were in his employ and under his influence. At the time of his death, he was worth about $8 million. A church was erected after his death by his wife. It still stands, it's called St. George's Anglican Church. Margaret continued to live at the 17-room Victorian mansion until she died there 30 years later in 1923. I wanted to sidetrack a sec and talk about Etta and her husband. Now she married a guy named John Herbert II, 
and they had three kids. Now, John Herbert was vice president and treasurer of the snuff company for about 11 years. He was also mayor of Helmetta for 11 years, as well as chairman of the New Jersey State Highway Commission. In his obituary, it lists all the different organizations he was involved in, but I found it interesting that when he was in college at Rutgers, on November 6th, 1869, he played the first ever college football game where Rutgers defeated Princeton 6-4. I linked the article down below, so if you want to go read about this game, it's actually pretty interesting. So what killed him was that he had been golfing and he got a blister, which got infected and then it caused blood poisoning. After about two weeks, his leg was amputated and then he died shortly after that. Now, Etta was very involved with charities and she founded a children's home and she gave many donations to it. She also donated a lot of equipment to a wing in a hospital. She also founded the Gertrude Herbert Memorial Institute of Art in Augusta, Georgia, in memory of her daughter, and that still stands. The Herberts had a winter home in Augusta, Georgia. Now in East Brunswick, New Jersey, there's also a Herbert Drive, which is about 12 minutes down the road from Helmetta. A couple years after George's death, this newspaper article shows that the sheriff is selling off some plots of the property. He must not have gotten very far because in a 1935 newspaper ad, it confirms that the company still owned 95% of the town. So George's son, named George Appleby Helm, became the next president of the snuff mill. I'm not sure why this says George W. here though. In 1900, the deed transferring the plant and property of George W. Helm Company to American Snuff Company was filed. Also in 1900, George A. moved to New York City. In 1913, a paper says Helmetta is the home of the largest snuff industry. Here's a really pretty advertisement. I'm not sure the date of it, but I assume since it says there's an office in New York, it must be during George A.'s time. He died in 1931 at age 64 in New York City. Now, after George A. died, his son James Buckaloo Helm became president. Here's his passport photo from 1921, and he's 21 here. He was an engineer. He's the president of the company until his death in 1952. None of my records show him living in Helmetta in his adulthood, though. He lives in Connecticut for a while and in New York, and he was abroad in France when he died. He was the last Helm to run the company. I couldn't find out who runs it after him. Here's a newspaper article showing what the plant looked like in 1923. By 1949, 40 brands of the snuff is being produced. There were five factory buildings at the snuff mill, each had a different job. One cured and ground the tobacco. This newspaper ad was saying that the tobacco was aged three years in these barrels before it was processed into snuff. Another building packaged it into bottles, cans, and boxes. Another building made tin cans. Another labeled and stamped the boxes. And another one was used for storage. Here's a headline from 1934 stating that Five cases of snuff was being shipped with Richard Byrd on his second trip to Antarctica. He must have really liked snuff. Here's a little article saying that the modern snuffer actually chews the tobacco instead of sniffing it. In 1986, the mill was purchased by American Maize Products. In 1988, the Helmetta Snuff Mill was still the largest sweet snuff producer. One third of the American used dry snuff was made in Helmetta. The mill continued operating until 1993 when it was purchased by Swisher International and the operations were moved to Wheeling, West Virginia. After 160 years of snuff production, the site became quiet. Workers no longer shuffled in each day and the sweet smell of snuff would no longer fill the air. Here's a few photos that were snapped during a 2006 walkthrough. There was a lot of talk in the newspapers around this time about people who were worried what was going to happen to it. Here, it's still boarded up in 2012. Then somebody renovated it. I'm not sure what happened to all five factory buildings, but when I looked it up on Google Maps, this is what I saw. Now leasing. 
Then I looked at this angle of the building and what do you know? There's a website, loftsathelmeta.com. So I went there. Well, somebody renovated it to be apartments, really nice apartments. Here's some photos of inside the apartment. I think it looks pretty awesome. It looks like a fancy hotel. My snuff jar is pretty crude. It's got two really strong seams. It looks like a cup bottom mold. It's blown, tooled, and cork top. It has pretty faint embossing, and that was really hard to get a decent picture of. This was the best I could get. It says Helms Railroad Mills. Apparently Helm kept the brand name Railroad Mills. Since it says Helms and not Appleby and Helm, I would date this between 1884 when Helm took over the business, and I wouldn't say it's much later than 1900. I feel like it's probably on the earlier end of the spectrum. By the way, you can still buy some Railroad Mills snuff from a couple different places. And that's it for today. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.